I deserve it for myself and I deserve it for the fans. And the fans deserve it for me to, to for me to fight the best and nothing less, you know what I mean? Um, there's so much I can say about that as far as people fighting the best and, and, and making it. But it's just me. That's just my heart. That's just where I want to be. And I don't want to stop. I, I just want to keep continue to keep moving forward. The bronze bum is back. You know, hope. Good morning. It's early. 7.19 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Friday, August the 19th, 2022. The weigh-in for Alexander Usyk versus Anthony Joshua is going to be starting momentarily. We're going to talk about the fights, watch the weigh-in, obviously, live stream. Um, and the reason why it's so early is because it's in Saudi Arabia. And normally, a UK weigh-in, if it was Joshua fighting in the UK, like the first fight, the weigh-in will be about 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or so. I think about 8 a.m., so it's, it's, it's a little early. Normally, I'm, I'm always up this early. I'm, I start my days at about um, 5.30 a.m. or so. But this is the time where I'm normally getting myself together. I'm not usually together until about like 8 a.m. or so. So I'm a little off right now. But how are you guys doing? How are you guys making out? Uh, yesterday, Luis Ortiz had a media workout ahead of his September the 4th fight on PBC on Fox pay-per-view against Andy Ruiz and Deontay Wilder decided to come in and uh, turn it into his media event. He did a whole 15 minutes and I counted. It was actually 16 minute interview with uh, baby hands, Ray Flores, where pretty much he just rambled on and talked about a whole bunch of nothing. I'm glad he's back though. Fighting Robert Herlinius on PBC, also on PBC on Fox pay-per-view, October the 15th in the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. So we're waiting for the weigh-in to start. Um, they're going to be starting momentarily. So in the meantime, let's listen to um, some Deontay Wilder. We're waiting for the weigh-in. Uh, drop a like while you're here. Um, listen to the Fight View 360 podcast, all one word, Fight View 360, on all of your listening platforms. Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeart, Player FM. Matchroom is live, but we're watching the Sky Sports one. If I can be a light, an inspiration, a motivation to so many, not only people on the outside, but the fighters on the inside, you know. And um, with, with, with coming back with Robert, you know, you got to understand, this has been my sparring partner for a few years, so we know each other well. I think know? that makes for a more exciting oh, fight. I, I, I think you guys are going to let the leather <laughs> fly even more so. Yes, exactly. Jose and that's Mohan. why I start laughing like so I do. I mean, like I, said, I, I, I truly respect court, Robert and his craft. Two world title eliminators, and at the top of the bill, 12 rounds of boxing for the unified heavyweight championship of the world. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring the fighters up to the stage so they can face the scale and face each other. Our first contest, four rounds in the super welterweight division. Making his way to the stage from Sofia, Bulgaria, professional record, no wins, three defeats. Please welcome Traiko Georgiev. So I don't know who any of these people are. His opponent now making his way to the stage. Saturday night, it'll be his But what's going on? How you guys debut. doing? Out of Dubai in the UAE. Ladies and gentlemen, known as Money Kicks, please welcome Rashid Bill Hassan. So this Money Kicks guy is supposed to be the man. Like some type of social media influencer or something. You know who this dude is? I don't. I have no clue. I don't trust that background music at all. It's going to get me copywritten. But yeah, what's going on? How come they look like they just pulled this Money Kicks guy off some Twitch stream? They was in the Discord chat and was like, yo, you want to fight? He was like, yeah, mate. They was like, all right, you fighting on the zone this weekend. They just pulled this guy off the streets. Kilos for Rashid. What are they thinking? 
<coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, you know this dude? Why is he sucking in his stomach like that? Anybody know this guy? But yeah, I'm going to be here tomorrow. Um, the card starts at 1 p.m. Eastern, not 12, as I've been saying all week on the zone here in the States. Twenty one dollars. What up, Duke? Y'all know these people? I'm guessing these are the people that the Saudis was like, listen, these are our people. You got to put them on the card. That's the dude that's for the fight Mayweather? For real? I wonder if Loma's going to be over there. Loma arrived in the States um, a couple of days ago. I wonder if he came over to drop his shit off and maybe flew over to uh, Saudi Arabia to support Usyk. But basically, um, these are like the low, low of the undercard fights. Money Kicks hosted Mayweather and his team on a private tour of their family-owned zoo. Oh, so he like, he like rich. All right. Yeah, like they, they've been putting a lot behind him this week. So he's got the, he's a big YouTuber. Okay, okay. So he's got like the A-Rap money. Okay, all right. I'm going to check him out. Money Kicks. I've been told for years that me just covering boxing has been holding me back, that I could have been a big time social media influencer maybe i could have if i would have covered other shit like video games or fifa maybe i could have got my 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 shot at jake paul his father's a billionaire in the dubai there you go well there you go all right thanks uh khalil and um made by denim because i i was like trying, trying to figure out like who is this guy but apparently he's a big deal he's got that you know like that that money they could have hired him a personal trainer though Those beards are almost touching. Oh, yeah, you can't drink liquor. I could have swore I saw a bar over there. I was watching a talk sport um, a boxing stream yesterday, and I could have swore I saw a bar in the background. Maybe they just have a bar where they serve, like, juice and, like, virgin daiquiris and shit. Okay. But, yeah, how you guys doing, man? You guys all right? It is early. And you know what I got to do after this stream? I got to have some breakfast and then I got to go cut grass. I hate cutting grass. I hate it so much. Mm. I hate it so much. Then got to head to the Dollar General to pick up some dog snacks. Come home, prepare for a stream, then head to the gym. I haven't had sex in God knows how long. I'm, I'm falling apart, mates. I'm falling apart. I'm falling apart. I think you can drink in really specific places. It's not open, that's for sure. Okay. Yeah, I could have sworn I was watching a talk sport stream yesterday, and it was a bar in the background. So I was looking like, wait a minute. I'm like, what's in that bar? You know? I've lost nearly 30 pounds in two and a half months. 30 fucking pounds. I'm starting to feel it. I was 298 on March the 2nd. This morning, I was 272. I'm trying to get down to 250 by October 31st. So far, everything's going good. My ideal weight, I want to be 230. That's my, that's my, you know, my, my normal weight before I started gorging and binging was um, 220. Between 220, you know, 218, 
230, but I want to get down to 230. I don't want to get diabetes or high blood pressure. You know, that shit cause your ankles to swell up and they'll take your foot. They'll take your fucking foot. I'm doing well, Julian. I'm just hungry. Is also, I'm going to have one uh, turkey sausage, a piece of low carb bread, um, two large egg whites with um, peppers and onions. That's what I'm having for breakfast. And for a snack, about an hour, maybe two hours after, I'm going to have a uh, yogurt parfait. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, very busy day tomorrow. Very, very busy day. I'm going to be here all day. Um, starting at about noon, I'm going to sit down here, make sure my food is prepped, and I'm going to be covering boxing from this whole card. Um, you have three primetime cards where you have Emmanuel Navarrete versus Eduardo Baez on top rank on ESPN. You have the Showtime card headline now by Omar Figueroa and Sergey Limpignets. It was supposed to be Broner. And then um, UFC 278, which I'm looking forward to. So I'm going to be working probably about maybe maybe 18 hours tomorrow, some shit. No, I'm not fasting. I do um, three meals a day, two snacks. So basically I'm doing um, about 2,500 to 2,800 calories a day. Um, I'm in the gym for 90 minutes three miles on the uh treadmill six miles on the uh exercise bike and then i do 10 laps around the uh indoor track but i don't i'm not like i'm doing i'm doing good so what i'm doing is um i'm cutting weight down and then i'm gonna build my muscle back up after i get to an um ideal weight my ideal weight florian marco fights next thursday right I know who Florian Marco is. Why are you talking to me like this? Correct. It is a calorie deficit. Yes. Correct. Yes. So according to, and you know, sometimes it can be a little bit off, but according to my, um, my uh, Galaxy watch and what I'm tracking, I'm burning up. I'm burning about 1500 calories or so. A day. Let me check and see what I burned yesterday. I don't feel bad. I feel great. But it's just like, damn, you know, I'm sleeping like a lot more. Like I'm getting like a full like I don't like when I wake up and when I go to sleep, I'm looking forward to Ben Whitaker, by the way. When I wake up, I mean, when I go to sleep, like I sleep like going to the gym every day you get. And if you're eating right yesterday, I burned fifteen hundred calories, fifteen thirty day before sixteen hundred day before that 15 an average of about 1500 calories a day i'm burning <clears throat> does your performance suffer no no i'm actually doing better no my performance doesn't suffer at all like i'm like um i'm going farther in the gym for example um i'm getting like put it this way i'm doing maybe in a like I'm do I don't know how to explain it but I'm doing better. Yes, I think um Leon Edwards can um get an upset over uh, Usman. This is the main card right here or is this the YouTube? This is um the guy who re replaced Tyrone Spong. He's fighting Andrew Tabidi. He's huge. Let's turn it up and listen to it. I don't want that music though. <laughs> That music might get me copywritten. Yeah, well, no, I'm I'm cutting weight. I'm cutting weight. Like, that's what I'm doing. I'm not worried about muscle right now. Yes, my knees and my shins. I had to buy um um uh, compression sleeves for my legs because I was getting mad shin splints. Mad shin splints. No, I'm getting a lot of protein. Like, don't trust me, guys. I'm I'm really... Like I'm really like researching and I'm also on um um snack. So I'm taking um supplements as well. But no, I feel good. Like I don't have like I don't have like fatigue or anything. You like throughout the day. But going to going to um 
this guy Wilson fights like Tyson. He does. Look at him. He looks like he fights like Tyson. Let's listen to the weight. 98.3 for Andrew the Beast Tabidi. 98.3 kilos. Tabidi, remember, you? he got knocked out brutally. Former Mayweather Promotions fighter. Knocked out brutally by um, Unier Dorticos in the second World Boxing Super Series tournament. Look at that. Like, dude, is huge. Thanks, Gene. But no, I'm doing like well. Like, I don't get tired or fatigue. It's just that um, I have been having issues with shin splints. So I got compression. Um, that's what stops me from going harder in the gym is the shin splints. Like, that shit was killing me. So I had to get some um, compression sleeves. And yes, like every day, I'm pretty, my legs are like crazy sore. But I used to be somewhat. I'm not going to say like, I used to be somewhat like of, of an athlete when I was younger, played basketball every day. So when I was in a coma um, in 2018, I got all the way down, not by choice. I lost um, like 80 pounds, you know, because you're laying there for all that time. So I never got my body back together after that. So I had like limited mobility and everything. So I'm stretching like I'm feeling really, really good. No, just a regular, um, I do the um, uh, exercise bike. I've been looking at um, assault bikes to buy one for myself, but no, I'd rather go to the gym. Yeah, them shin splints ain't no joke, but mostly I'm getting them because I'm running with such a heavy weight. Um, as I said, I was 298 in on May the 2nd, and now this morning I weighed myself. I'm down to 272. <clears throat> So my short-term goal right now is to be able to run for two minutes straight. I'm up to like a minute and a half before I feel like I'm about to pass out and fall off the treadmill. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, I'm doing the road work. I'm doing the road work. I like Ramla Ali. I couldn't stand her at first. Jesus, Big J, he always, uh, it's nothing to talk about, Big J. Let me message him now. I'm not reading that too much. They don't have a fan bike. They don't have a fan bike. I would love to use a fan bike. And I'm not a fan of a, um elliptical. Get yeah, a fan bike is that joint, you know, but I'm not. They don't have one. I would love to use it. No, I don't do. Um, I stretch at home for half an hour. Let me tell you what my routine is. I take my um, my supplements. Um, I forgot what it's called. I'm on the snack program. It's a green apple drink. Um, you drink it. Do 20 minutes of. Um, you wait 20 minutes, then I do about a half an hour of uh, stretching. I take this. This here. <clears throat> Head to the gym directly on the treadmill for 50 minutes. Then I do 10 laps around the indoor track. And then I hop directly on the bike. Come home, do some uh, minor lifting, um, resistance bands, uh, 50 pounds. But yeah. Yes, this is the first ever women's fight in Saudi Arabia. SSB 28. I don't know what you got to talking about. Listen, I got my own workout routine. Thanks for you. Thanks for your input. You know, but I'm I got my own little routine going. But basically, I'm cutting weight. I'm just cutting. I'm cutting weight. Pretty much. I'm cutting weight. Um, the pool is always like full of old people when I go. You know, so if I do go to the pool and I, I really I always want to go to the pool, but I'm never up early enough. If I go if I use the pool, I want to be there early. But my gut's telling me that that's when the swimmers are going to be there as well. Who's this guy? Zizo 
But no, I'm going like for damn near a 300 pound man. Like I was almost 300 pounds. So the damn near lose 30 pounds. Like I'm feeling fucking good. Now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen. Alfredo, El Argentino, Alatore. Yeah, the old people just be hogging up the pool, bro. I be looking like, why don't you motherfuckers get out? Normatech boots, great for recovery. What are those? I don't even know what that is. Oh, those are the ones that like massage your legs, that give you those like jolts. I forgot what they're called. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The swimmers are going to be there bright and early. Tyson Bin Laden. But yeah, but no, I feel great. You know, and I've gotten to a point where um, I take a rest day every 10 days. Normally, actually, no, I've been going to the gym for a month straight now, close to a month straight. But I want to take a rest day every 10 days, but it's it's been every Friday. It seems as I've been taking a rest cheat day. So I'm going to the gym. Normally, I go between like 10 and 12 for about 90 minutes. Um, today though, since I got to go outside, cut grass and everything, I'm going to go tonight at like 7 PM tomorrow. I'm going to take off and then back in, um, back in on Sunday. I like the undercard. Um, the fights I'm interested in are, I'm interested in a uh, column Smith, Matthew Badalik. And, um, Felix Hergovitz versus CCP Big Bang Zhe Li Zhang. Yeah, word on the curb um, is that Bevo and Ramirez may head to Saudi Arabia for the money. You know, Saudi Arabia is really trying to, um, Um, they're put. Oh, there's Popeye. That's Richard Popeye Rivera. I rated the undercard. What did I rate it yesterday? Did I rate it a C plus or did I rate it a B? I don't remember. It's a solid undercard. It's not great, you know. But it got it has some fights that you know kind of stick out. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. Kinda. Badu the draw Jack. He is CCP. I'm not making it up. CCP. The Chinese Communist Party. Zhang. But yeah, my whole diet is micromanaged, like everything. But I am feeling weak as fuck. I haven't had any breakfast yet. Like nothing, just water. And a cup of iced tea. No one Badu Jack, this shit gonna fuck around and be a draw. Hold up. No, I don't like this kilo shit. Y'all need to make sure you're announcing kilos and in pounds. Man, now I got to pull up my kilo to pound calculator. Damn it. So 90.3. So he weighed in at 199. Look, I got my calculator up for you guys. You see what I do for you? You see what it up? Oh, that's going to definitely get me copyrighted that this is how we do by 50 cent in the game. Oh, what's going on with you guys, man? You guys all right? Thanks for joining me this early. Um, weigh-ins are normally not this early. I mean, I covered UK weigh-ins, but they're never this early. It's because it's in Saudi Arabia. 
you know, it's 744, 745 where I'm at right now. Okay, Popeye. I used to love that movie when I was a kid with Robin Williams and Shelley Duvall. I love that movie to death. It had some adult themes in it, too. Like the dude kept trying to uh, be a sex pest to um, was it olive oil. Remember the dude, like the big bulky dude? I forgot his name. It's like, bro, why are you fucking being like a deviant? Like, what's going on with you, bro? You stalking. <clears throat> yeah, Bottle Jack has moved up the cruise away. It's been a couple of years now. In fact, let me pull up the box rack. I'm tripping. Anthony, oh, let me pull up the card for you guys. Yeah, don't worry. Um, I'm going to translate the weights. Brutus. There you go. Brutus was a weirdo. Bruno? Was it Brutus or Bruno? You guys just making up anything. Look, three different names. Julian says Bluto. Timothy says Bruno. Gene says Brutus. Y'all going to make me Google it. Y'all really going to make me Google it. Damn it. I got to Google it now. Popeye villain. This is the guy Colin Smith is fighting. It's Bluto. Julian's right. Damn it, Gene and Timothy, you guys don't know nothing. I, I just looked it up. Look, I just looked it up. It's Bluto. It's Popeye's nemesis. Didn't the movie get canceled? I don't know. I want to watch it again, though. I do remember as a kid, I was watching and was like, yo, something is wrong here. Like, this, this guy's a sicko. <laughs> I was like, why is this guy always like stalking and kidnapping her? Like, bro, what are you doing with her? <laughs> like, what are you what are you doing? So listen, this is supposed to be a WBC, a final eliminator. So the winner of this fight is going to be the mandatory for Archer Bert to BF. Damn, dude is ripped. Let's see. All right, hold on. 79. Let's go 79.2 kilos. So he waited at one. Boom. 174.6. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm translating the kilos for you guys. I got my, my trusty calculator here. 79.2, 174.2. Also, both weighing in at 179. I mean, 174.6. See? Pepe, Pepe Le Pew was a weirdo. Yeah, he was definitely a weirdo. He was a weirdo. Like, he was that dude. I mean, he got, he definitely got canceled, didn't he? Wasn't he the skunk? Stinking ass nigga. Wasn't he the skunk? Weirdo. Like, cartoons used to be weird. Like, bro, and he was a vicious stalker. Like, it's like, bro, why are you stalking? Buddy, shut up. Get out of my face. Sit down. Talking to my dog. Yeah, he was a weirdo, Pepe Le Pew. Guys are sickos, man. But yeah, um, this is a WBC fight. So basically, the winner of this fight is going to be the mandatory for Archer Bert to BF. Archer Bert to BF was supposed to fight um, uh, Anthony Yard in October, but he just came down with an injury. So therefore, he's going to be, um, Anthony Yard's supposed to be fighting in December in a stay busy fight but basically this is supposed to be the next mandatory now he wasn't just no romantic bro it's like all right he was a romantic to an extent but it was like he was a fucking stalker too al is doing good he's in this cage and he's having a fit having a fit smell like all right gave him a dollar all right Bluto and Brutus are the same character for real? Was it like a um, like a country thing, like where it's like different names in different countries? No, I mean my dog's a weirdo sometimes. Like he be on some like possessive type shit. Look at Adam Smith over there. Where are the bodies? Is that Adam Smith down there? Yeah, we got stalked by a cat. Um, we were walking, me and my dog, two weeks ago. Oh, well, let's listen to the interview. My bad. 
I'll tell you the story later. Yeah, a lot better. Obviously, making weight always one of your main goals as a fighter. It, it, at times, it becomes the main goal, and that, that's not the right reason. But you know, I feel good. I feel stronger this weight. I feel I'm performing well in the gym, and hopefully, I can carry that performance into the ring. Just such a confidence boost and great memories coming back to this arena where you won your world title. Yeah, first time back here brings back good memories. Obviously, become a world champion in here, but. That all means not, and now I've got new goals, new things I want to achieve, and that's to become a 2 8 world champion. And a win here on Saturday night puts me one step closer to that. Your final thoughts ahead of the fight with Matthew Bordalika, WBC title eliminator. Tell us how it goes. Yeah, good. I, I feel good. I feel very good. And I think when I'm good, I can beat anyone in the world. And I've had a good camp. I'm in a very good place. And the plan is to go in there and show the best vision of me. Callum, best of luck. Ladies and gentlemen, Callum Smith. Yeah, um, Tyrone Spong was supposed to fight Andrew Tabidi, but he mysteriously disappeared off the card. No reason given. Oh, yes. Hergovitz versus CCP, Jay Li Zhang, Big Bang. I'm very excited about this fight. And now making his way to the stage, he is undefeated in his campaign as a professional. With I gotta cut the fucking grass, man. I hate cutting grass. Defeats, one draw and 19 wins coming by way Look of at my man, Nadia. CCP Fighting Big Bang Xi Li Zhang. China. Here is the, two the Chinaman. Olympian, the 2008 Olympic silver medalist and the former WBO regional heavyweight champion, John Big Bang Jilei. CCP Xi Li. Delay. So let's turn that music down. I am. I, I am. I'm not even a low key Big Bang fan. I'm like, I am a fan. Like, I would be so happy if he knocked out Felix Hergovitz. I'd be like, yes, CCP. I wouldn't dare put that TikTok bullshit on my phone, though. The CCP be spying on people and trying to corrupt our society. There you go, Brando, CCP, Big Bang, Zhe Li Zhang. Isn't that how you're supposed to do it in China? Like you say the last name first or something like that. I learned it from Yao Ming. Like you say like their, their first name last or something. Excuse me for being culturally inept. Let's see how much he weighs. I'm going to translate the kilos for you. Let's see. 125.7 for John Gillet. 125.7. 277. 277. Big Bang J. Lee has weighed in at 277. The undefeated El Animal from Zagreb, Croatia, Philip Hergovic. The Oriental Parlor. <laughs> Hergovic looks slimmer. One. 10.2 for the 242 for um 242 for Felix Hergovitz. Let's see what he weighed in for his last fight. Let's see here. Because Zeli Zhang, CCP, Big Bang Zeli Zhang, looks like he's heavier. Okay, so no, Hergovitz is is 240. Like the last time he fought, he was 246. Zay Li Zhang, who weighed in at 240, 277, was 276. Okay, so this is he's been this way for a little while now. Hergovich, John Zelay, the much anticipated fight. 12 it's rounds family the tradition IDF first, then given name. Fighting. There you go. All right, makes sense. Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. Main, co -main event of the evening. Makes sense. <clears throat> so, yeah, the main event's up next. Let's do a poll. Um, one for Joshua, two for Usyk. Who do you have winning? I got Usyk. Oh, I like how Chinese people talk. I hope that's not bigotry. Is that a crime? Let's listen to his interview. Huge fight against Philip Hergovich. Now you've weighed in. How ready are you? Yep. I'm ready. 
You're a big guy, he's a big guy as well. There's nothing between you height-wise, but 15 kilograms heavier. Do you plan to try and make that weight advantage count? This is my advantage, my power, Chinese power. Chinese power. Have you got a message for everyone here and everyone back home? the CCP power. Oh, he took the mic. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for your support. Tomorrow, he's going to go to sleep. Oh! CCP style. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay yes. tuned for the main event weigh-in for Rage on the Red Sea. Yes. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Very excited. So, yeah, he's weighing in 30... What is it? 37 pounds heavier? Damn, they're 40 pounds heavier than um, Felix Hergovitz. It's the IBF eliminator. They're going to be the next mandatory. What's next in the mandatories? Is it the IBF next or is it the WBO? I think, I think this is the next mandatory. Yeah, TikTok is CCP. Definitely. I watched a video on YouTube explaining how like TikTok is evil and how like the CCP had like give gave American children TikTok to make them dumber and to destroy our society. Shit like that. You know, like basically um, short attention spans. But yeah, I'm going to be here tomorrow um, streaming during the main event. Of a Usyk Joshua 2. We're waiting for the fighters to come out to get on the scale. Yes, the IBF first, and then the WBO, and then Daniel Dubois has to fight the winner of Michael Hunter, Huey Fury, to be the next mandatory. Hopefully, though, in a perfect world, you know, but but Tyson Fury has been a weirdo lately. Let me tell you something. I used to love Tyson Fury to death, but he's become a fucking weirdo. It's like, bro, you retired or not? I'm starting to think that he's back on the um, nose clams again. Y'all think he's on the nose clams? Y'all think Tyson Fury on some shit? You know, or was, you know, um, me and my colleague were talking about was um, maybe Tyson Fury's having some money issues. You think that because he's MTK's number one, the former AT MTK number one boxer, that maybe they froze his assets because he's been acting real funny lately, bro. Like real funny. And I'm thinking to myself, like, bro, like, you know, um, what are you doing with yourself? You know, like trying to fight like bullshit exhibitions. Did he try to fight the mountain after trying to fight Derek Chisora? It's like, what are you doing? You know, so in a perfect world, I would love to see the winner of Usyk Joshua um, fight Tyson Fury. Mind games, but at, but you know I can understand how you can say mind games, but it, it's to it's 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 to it's to a point. You see what I'm saying? It's to a point, you know. Like I don't give a fuck about the mind games part. It's annoying. Like mind games are not, and mind games for who? Like for who? But it's like he's not even doing it right because it's like if you're going to say you're retiring, all right, bro, then like be retired for a little bit. Don't be calling motherfucker out like because it don't look like you can say that it's mind games. You can say that he's trying to, um, um, you know, leverage for bigger money, but he ain't looking right. It, 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 it's, it's ridiculous. Floyd ain't do the same thing. See, I knew some motherfucker motherfuckers always want to bring up Floyd. I knew somebody was going to come out. No, Fury had a fight in April, okay, and then retired three different times and then come back. It's not what Floyd did. I'm sorry. Floyd was some bullshit, too, but Floyd had a little bit of method to his madness. It's not the same thing. I'm sorry. I'll fight that tooth and nail. It's not the same thing, and I'm not a Floyd dick rider. I'm not. It's not the same thing. I'm sorry. Like Floyd, when he retired, he would come back and admit something. It was like, all right, you know, if he come back, he really got some type of plan. For example, when he retired the first time, everybody, he didn't want the rematch with Oscar De La Hoya. But also he did leverage for more money and he did get that new Showtime deal. 
Exactly. There you go, Theo. He would get more credibility if he dropped the WBC. Then it would be like, all right, you really are retired. Like, bro, like, no, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. I'm sorry. It's not the same thing. You know, and I've, I've had people, you know, and I've been watching on social media, too. When people bring up the Floyd thing, it's like if you're a Floyd fan or not, they get slaughtered. It's like, yo, Tyson Fury just fought fucking in April and retired three times since then. Like, it's erratic. You know, leveraging for more money. It's like if he was really serious, then he would have retired and be like, you know what? I'm dropping all of my belts um, after he beat Dylan White. You know, but what did he try to do? He tried to fight in Ghanu. He tried to fight Derek Tesora. And then he, he went and stalked the mountain from Game of Thrones. Like, bro, like, no, it ain't the same thing. See, no, I understand. I see you got quiet all of a sudden. Don't come in here chatting shit, mate. Chat shit, get banged. Do they still say that over there in the UK? Hold on one But yeah, anyway, let's see what they're talking about over on Sky. Hey, let's turn that down. Hey, but now, he, you know, he's got a, a coach in Robert Garcia who is very experienced in uh, top-level fighting where his fighters are looked... That's what it seems like, Z388. That's what it seems like. You don't just go in there swinging. People think it's just as, as easy as going in there swinging up. But that's built for Usyk style. So you have to have some sort of intelligence in there, some sort of thought in there while you go in there to try and get your shots off at the same time. We, we speak about how much Anthony Joshua will have learnt, Carl, from that first fight. But let's not forget that Alexander Usyk, he would have learnt a great deal as well. And then Andy spoke to him, Andy Clark, in the week, and he said he'd been studying Anthony Joshua for the last 10 years or so. What do you think he'll be going? What would his game plan be, be going into this, do you think? I think he'll draw a lot of confidence from the first fight. Um, uh -oh. Fighting against the world champion in Anthony Joshua, who's big and strong and confident when he gets in the ring. I mean, I think he's lost a bit of confidence since the Ruiz lost. I still don't think he's fully back in the room from then. Um, and I think his performances have shown that. But Usyk beating AJ in the manner in which he beat him up at heavyweight. That will give him supreme confidence exactly. going into this. He'll, he'll, he'll have gone in not quite knowing. You can say that Fury's playing with us and, and then Sino's going to say, I mean, if you know, you know. Whatever y'all may say, y'all may be, you know, like, all right, listen, I'm a Fury fan. I've always been. I've been covering him for 10 years before anybody over here in the States were talking about him for real, for real. You know, so y'all can say all that shit all y'all want as fans, but it's a weird look. It's like, you know, he's all over the place. And y'all talking about some is mind games. It's making him look like a weirdo. And fans are getting tired of it. You know, so I understand you, Lewis Murphy, and C, you know, you y'all may like be cool with this type of shit, but in reality, in the real world, outside of a fan, it's like dude can't make up his mind. Now, remember, I always say we're not always supposed to agree. We're not always going to agree, but it's a weird look. Like on um, the, 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 the fucking mind games and shit, that shit not cool. And it's working and everyone's still talking about fear. See, look, people say shit like that, like Jim, you know, well, yeah, he's got everyone talking like you motherfuckers, man. Actually, he's playing with you. <laughs> he's not playing with us. We tired of the shit. All brought to you by officially in partnership with Ministry of Sports in cooperation with Skill Entertainment. Challenge Entertainment. Correct. Master and he's Boston banned from the States. Get some of He's playing mind games. 17 and 258 management. Sponsored by Saudi Airlines and JD Sports and broadcast around the world on Sky Box Office, Sky Sports Box Office, and J and pardon me, and JD Sports. Let's bring the Warriors to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the challenger tomorrow night. He's an Olympic gold medal champion. His professional record now stands at an outstanding 26 fights, 24 victories, 22. Of those 24 victories by knockout, only two defeats. He's the two-time heavyweight world champion, the fighting pride of London, England, the man known as AJ Anthony Joshua!
All right, let's turn that down. I think um, he's going to be a little bit under 240. He waited at 237 for uh, Andy Ruiz in a rematch. He lost 10 pounds. If he comes at 230, I'd be shocked. victories, 13 wins by knockout. The former undisputed cruiser. I did watch that talk sport yesterday. Uh, um, Z, I watched that yesterday. Joshua's been asking people for advice during fight week. Let's go full screen. By the way, the fight's going to be on The Zone here in the States. Um, Card starting at 1 p.m. Eastern over in the U.K. Probably, Lord knows, I don't know what time it's going to be starting. But it's going to be on pay-per-view on Sky Sports Box Office, despite the fact that Joshua signed the deal with The Zone. You would have thought they would have signed them after the fight, but hey, you know, that's their problem. First on to the scales will be the former two-time world champion, now the challenger. He steps onto the scales with that record of 24 victories. 20 oh, let me get my uh, kilo two defeats from calculator because they've been weighing Here's in at AJ, kilos. Anthony Joshua. I'll translate for you guys. The pounds. 110.9 kilos for the Okay, so 110.9 244. Anthony Joshua. 244. Next 0.5. 244 and a half. Perfect record of 19 fights, 19 wins, 13 KOs. The reigning He weighed in. Unified heavyweight world champion Alexander. He's 4 pounds heavier than the first fight. 4 and a half pounds. Usyk was 221 and a half and a quarter for the first fight. He is now weighing in at what? 100, 100.5 kilos for the reigning and defending champion. The same weight, 221. The same weight as the first fight, 221. Oh, Here face off, full face tree. Face to face challenger and champion. The rematch the world has been waiting for. It's all tomorrow night at the 244 and a half for Joshua. 221, the same weight for the first fight for Usyk. Boxing for the Unified Heavyweight Championship of the World. 100.5 kilos, which which translates to 221.5, basically 221.6 for Usyk. It's AJ versus Usyk. The yeah, I thought Josh would have probably tried to come in a little, a little smaller. I thought it would have came in a little smaller. Turn that music down. I mean, maybe he wants to be bigger to sit on his punches more. Because they were talking about all week how Joshua has to make this a six-round fight. You know, those first six rounds, he's got to really lay it on Usyk and not allow him to get into a game plan. Because if it goes 12 rounds, well, frankly, you know, it's going to favor Usyk. And also what I found out is that um, Usyk has been down three times in his career, amateur career, and they were all to body shots. Interesting, right? Let's go back full screen. A lot of pressure on AJ's shoulders. A lot of pressure on that man's shoulders. A lot of pressure.
But yeah, he's got to make, you know, he's got to give Usyk something to think about. And trying to outbox Usyk, I was so frustrated in Joshua because I was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, why are you trying to box him? Like, bro, like you tripping. You won't get your ass laid out. Let's listen to the interviews. Alexander, so much talk about your weight this week. We all got it wrong. You're there or thereabouts what you weighed for the first fight. Just the way that you take a photo, the angle that you stand, or uh, have you been tricking us all along? Hi, Julian. А бачите, не завжди сподівання стають реальністю. You see, your expectations uh, not every time are met. Tell us what you saw when you looked into his eyes there. It was a long stare down between the two of you. У вас був, ви довго тримали погляд один на одного. Що ти побачив в його очах? Себе. Myself. Tell us what happens tomorrow night. It was the reflection of myself. Tell us what happens tomorrow night. In that reflection, were you still holding those belts when you uh, walk out of the ring tomorrow night? Is it and still? І що ти бачив у відображенні його очах, що ти виходиш з рингу з поясами? Ми завтра побачимо це. We're going to see it tomorrow. You have a final message. A lot of people back home watching. A lot of people around the world watching. Чи є в тебе фінальний меседж для всіх, хто дивиться тебе по всьому світу? Дякую всім, з Богом. Thank you very much. Lord help us. Thank you. Good luck. Let's just swing you right round and go straight over to Anthony Joshua. Anthony, same question to you. That was a long head to head there. What was going through your mind as you looked into his eyes? Not much. It's just a face off. I always say for me personally, face off don't mean nine. Just about the bell ringing and us fighting level, really. Face off don't win fights. Obviously, so much talk about his weight. He's there or thereabouts. I think you're just about four pounds heavier and. Does that change your sort of approach at all? Were you preparing for a heavier Rusik or you just got all eyes on, on your game plan and what you're doing? I'll be honest, all this stuff don't matter, just about the fight. Real talk, all this stuff, weight, face-offs, none of it matters to me. Just looking forward to the fight. Okay, your final thoughts then. You will have imagined that fight, you will have visualized that fight. How does that fight go tomorrow? Just ready for 12 rounds, 100%. 100% ready for 12 rounds and anything short of that is a bonus. 12 rounds or less. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. I agree. Um, uh, Chisora, he brought it to him. He brought it to uh, Usyk. And Usyk, you know, you can tell that he was kind of laboring a little bit, you know. And, and if you were to um, talk about any possible weakness in Usyk is he does seem to have some issues with pressure. But if you're going to be right there in front of him like AJ was, then, you know, he's going to pick you apart. You dig? He's going to pick you apart. But um, I'm finally glad that the fight is here because I've been talking about it all week long, you know, and um, I'm kind of burnt out a little bit of talking Usyk versus Joshua. So let's go run through the undercard again. By the way, Usyk had weighed in at 221, about the same, at, closer to 222, about the same as the first fight. Joshua, four pounds heavier. He weighed in for the first fight at 240 after his previous fight. Um, let me pull it up real quick. Previous fight, yeah, he weighed in at 240. 240 for Pulev and 237 for Andy Ruiz. So this fight, he's come in slightly heavier at 244. And you have to wonder what is the strategy behind that? Maybe, you know, like uh, um, Robert Garcia is telling him, you're going to be like teaching him to sit on his punches more. Like when you hit him, you got to really lay down on them joints. I don't know. But, um, Maybe the game plan is to go out there to try to demolish. I want to see how aggressive he's going to be. And Usyk and his team are very smart, and they already talked about how, well, you know, we already know he's going to work on everything, what he's going to work on. And Usyk also, um, they talked about it earlier in the week where they're watching everything that the media is saying about how, like, Joshua is, has to come out more aggressive. So you have to expect that maybe Usyk is probably going to expect that and maybe try to take it late to try to pick Joshua apart because he is heavier. And Joshua does has a history, not really gassing out, except for the Andy Ruiz fight, the first one, he definitely was gassed out. But he does slow down in fights. Like, he slows down significantly later on in fights. Like, significantly. 100 
10.9 kilos for the challenger, <clears throat> former two-time world champion, AJ Anthony Joshua. Next on to the scale. But Usyk looks bigger. His perfect record of 19. Usyk looks bigger, but nope. He's the same size he was as the first fight. Unified heavyweight world champion, Alexander Usyk. 221. That hair is awesome. 100, 100.5 Dude's the man. for the reigning and So yeah, we're going to be here um, tomorrow streaming during the main event. Also, I'm going to be releasing a uh, podcast on all of this here. I'll put the link to my podcast down below in the, uh, in fact, I'll put it right here. I'm going to be releasing a podcast on all of your listening platforms on my thoughts on the fight later on. I'm also going to be back at 10 p. excuse me, 6 p.m. Eastern today to talk about the fight. You know, and all the other things that are going on. For example, we got uh, two more weigh-ins today for the um, Omar Figueroa, Sergey Lipinets card and the um, and um, Emmanuel Navarrete versus Eduardo um, Baez card. So there's still a lot more boxing coming, but I got to go cut some grass and get some breakfast. So I am going to be seeing you guys later on. Thanks for watching. Please drop a like before you go. We cover all major boxing live here on the channel, full, deep, in detail coverage. And yeah, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. And T-Street Controversy with 5 v 360